We're here, folks, on the Blackhawk, and I know a lot of you go striped bass fishing tonight with C.J. Adams. What are we going to do, C.J.? We are going to tell you a couple of tips on how to catch a big striped bass with us on the Blackhawk. I know it's a very, very popular fishery. We have a lot of customers that struggle to get on the trips. We know that's an issue as far as booking because we only take what? 18 people. Yeah, we only take 18, 19, 20 people. Uh, you know? But we're gonna go over a couple of tips. Um, Be before we get going though, you'll okay. see a lot of electrical paraphernalia on the boat here. We, are, we have been uh, hired by the underwater construction company, a gigantic, and I do mean gigantic, construction company that's nationwide and uh, we're going to be over the next couple of weeks here we're going to be taking divers out to the millstone power plant and they are going to be diving on the intake uh, uh, where they suck the water in for the reactors and today we've been loading the boat we have the boat chocker block filled with generators uh quite the ordeal quite the ordeal we had a huge crane here picking the stuff up we got man we must have five thousand pounds of stuff on here hot water heaters for the divers we got electrical wires all over the place this is just some of the monitoring devices and uh, they got computers and they're going to set up a lot more they got some on the other side here we've got so anyhow that's why when you see this stuff here it's uh it's not you know, the ordinary uh, deck house of the blackout hawk but it's uh it's going to be home here for a couple of weeks Pretty anyhow great. that said a couple of questions uh, these are going to be going over our upcoming topics. So not tonight, uh, but oh. over the next couple of weeks, we're going to go over. These are the questions that we get from you guys. A lot of a lot of people have been asking about, especially the first one, party party, <laughs> party boat, boat adequate. Party boat adequate. How to get on the boat? What to bring? The proper gear uh, as far as coolers, rods, tackle, we're clothing. Gonna, yeah, we're going to be going over that stuff probably the next time, the next couple of times. Uh, Fish filleting as well. Next week we're going to be, I believe, I got a dear friend of mine who owns two fish markets, and he has agreed. Next week I think we're going to uh, go to the fish market and we're going to have a seminar on filleting fish and taking care of fish the right way, uh, sharpening knives, what kind of knives, how to do it, the what and the wherefores of it, direct from the fishery in Mystic, Connecticut. My dear friend Mike uh, Mike Puglis. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing that next week. So we're, we're going to answer all your questions. We just can't do it all at once. But but keep the cards and letters keep coming, coming in. in. Keep the emails coming in. If you have a question tonight, you can either uh, text us right now and Randy, the camera boy behind the... Uh, yeah, we want to remind you right now. If you have any questions right now, we'd be happy to answer them. Randy could uh, let us know. So don't hesitate to ask. Or call or do through. it on email. And Heather will call me on my cell phone if you hear the cell phone ringing. That'll be my dear daughter with a question. So that said, night bass. Night bass. I know everybody wants to catch a big one. Uh, we go through it all the time. And there's little. Have you caught a big one? Uh, my biggest fish is 49. I've never broken 50. Really? I've never broken 50. You should always tell them. You know, hey, CJ, I got one for you. What do we got? We got a question. Dan White wants to know a fish sleep. I'm not really sure on that one. No, no, no. You've been in a long <laughs> I've, than I I've, uh, I've done a lot of diving at night. I've never seen them really sleeping. I know some do, the sharks and stuff. But Dan, you know. I don't know if they can close their eyes. I'm not sure. <laughs> I've never I, seen it. But I'm sure they got arrested at some point. No. Uh, but. Uh, that Thanks for the set. question, Dan. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you the night bass at, at night. I don't know if they sleep because that's where we catch them. Yeah. The best, anyway. They keep their eyes open, believe me. But we we basically, what we're going to tell you tonight, again, I say this on every seminar, it works for us. If you talk to somebody else, they'll get a different opinion. Well, well, that's okay. But we're, we're telling you, we're going to be very honest with you and tell you what works for us, not holding any strings back, okay? We, we, fish, we fish two kinds of ways. When we're fishing in a race, we're either using bucktails when the tide's running strong, or we're using live bait eels. Those are the two things. When we're fishing at Montauk, Block Island, we're using eels. Um, Most of our fishing in the race is early in the season. Yeah. End of May through June, we wait for the big fish to show up at Montauk. So primarily when we're fishing early, May, June, that's gonna be in the race. Uh, and we kind of wait for the fish to show up. When you're, when you're fishing bucktails, and, and I'm just telling you two different things here. When, when you're fishing bucktails, you have to have current, okay? You have to have current. That's why we fish around the, the, the full moon and the new moon when the tides are ripping, okay? You, you have to have current. Once you get under, and here's your first tip of the night, once you get under about a knot and a half, the, the bucktails don't work as good. That's all there is to it. Now, 
We've, we've had trips where we're drifting a half a knot and they're still climbing still up. Yeah, if absolutely. there's a lot of fish there and they're aggressive and you might be the only boat there, well, there's exceptions to the rule. But overall, once you start getting under a knot and a half drift, the bucktails don't work as good and we go to the go to the live bait, we go to eels, okay? So two kinds. You need the current for the bucktails. If you don't have the current, we go to the eels. Going to start off with the bucktails. When you when we start off a drift, uh, primarily we're starting in a little deeper water. We're going to come up a mountain, so to say. Picture a mountain underwater. When you start off, and let's just use for example 60 feet. You're going to come up that mountain. Brad will start on the board to show you guys. When you come up that mountain, let's say the crest is 30 feet. So as that boat drifts, you let this down in 60 feet. This is our standard bucktail rig. Uh, eight feet of line, roughly to your uh, to your bucktail. When you start at 60 feet of water and start that boat starts to move at two knots of current, eventually your sinker is going to start touching the bottom as you come up. And we, we struggle with this with the customers a lot because as they feel that bump, for one, they think it's a fish, they don't set the hook. You got to set the hook. What do, I, what do I mean by that? Swing the rod at every little bump you feel when you're coming up that bank. Because if you don't, you're going to hang it up. After you set the hook once or twice, take a turn or two on the reel every single time. If you don't, and you come up that bank, sinker starts hitting, if you don't take a turn or two, guess what? Your sinker starts getting higher and higher, your line gets out, and you get hung up. Then you lose the gear. You have to turn the handle. We're starting off, this is, I know I'm not a good drawer. This is the boat, okay? And, and we normally start off when we're fishing in the race somewhere, somewhere yeah. around 50 feet, mm -hmm. somewhere, depending on the wind and everything. But we use the terminology, feather the bottom. Feather the bottom. What does that mean? When you drop that line down and you hit that thing in 50 feet, you're going up the hill. So the next time it's going to be up here 45 feet. Then it's going to be 40 feet. Then it's going to be 35 feet. So you want to you want to stay in that strike zone near the bottom. Now if you wind it all the way up here and you're up here, you're never going to hang it up, but you're not going to be where the fish are living. So you've got to feather the bottom going up. Sometimes, now the tide's going this way, okay, so the drift's going, sometimes, it's running that, so hard. that fish are on the back side here, over here someplace. So a lot of times you're going up over this peak, and then when the, when the boat's over here, now you got to do just the opposite. Now you got to drop it back down and find that new bottom again as you're going off into the deep. So depending on where those fish are that night, you know, most of the time they're up in front, they're here. But what always got me about the about the bucktails is that fish has got to make a split second decision. When that he's down here in the rocks and he's looking up like that and that bucktail's going over him, he's got a tenth of a second to either eat it or not. And what really gets me is that they can tell the difference of the colors of the bucktail. Yeah. No question about it, okay? When we have 18 people, we've got a variety of bucktails out and you'll always find a particular kind is working better than, than another kind. And we try to shift everybody over. We're constantly Not working. Not every night is the same either. But you can have the same conditions. You one go night. out last night and it's one type of bucktail and tonight it's altogether different. Oh uh, yeah, you gotta yeah. change them out. We try and, when, uh, when you first drop in 50 feet of water, guys, you wanna take a couple of turns on the reel. You gotta keep that rod nice and steady, okay? When you feel that sinker start to touch or bite when you're coming up that hill, swing the rod, and take another turn. Take a turn. Every you're never, single time. You're never letting line out. We don't, don't. This is the problem. We hear this all night. Guys letting line out in the middle of the drift. Now, if you want to own the sinker or lose a whole bunch of lead, so be it. But after your initial drop, unless the captain, Greg, tells you to, Man. when they're off the backside, yep. that's when they'll tell you, hey, guys, find bottom again. What's that mean? Then you let some line out, feel that sinker touch. When, when Matt and I are running the boat, we're constantly telling you, okay, guys, drop them. We, we're in 50 feet of water. When we tell you to drop them, that's another thing. You got to drop them. You and when we tell you to wind them up. And when we tell you to wind them up, you got to wind them up. That's all there is to it. But we'll tell you, you're in 50 feet, guys. Let them go. And okay, you you're in 45. We're coming up the hill. 40, 35. Some, some of the places in the race are pretty, are pretty shallow, 18, 19, 20 feet. You know, we have some guys that lose so much gear. I had one guy a couple of years ago come up to me. He lost, I don't know, five or six rigs. And he says to me, why, why do you have to fish in that rough bottom? I just lost five sinkers. I said, you know, that's like asking Jesse James, why did you choose banks to rob? Because that's where the money is. 
Well, that's where the bass are. I can take you to where it's nice and smooth. You won't hang anything up. But you're not going to catch anything either. Okay? The race is tough. The race is, the race is hard, hard bottom. The race, the sluice way, uh, plumb gut, okay, race rock, those are rugged, rugged areas. But that's what the bass like. Okay, and you have to be aware of that and just pay attention and, and listen to the mates and listen to who I was running the boat, myself or Matt. And uh, it's not hard. It's certainly not hard. Some people make it hard. I got a, two questions for you guys real quick. Go ahead. Um, are charter boats required to use circle hooks? I know we do use circle hooks for the eels. And um, what rod, like what size rod are you going to be using for these trips? Uh, a lot of guys are custom with six foot six rod. Uh, that with medium heavy, uh, with a soft tip, so you can feel them. Uh, but you want to have some backbone in your rod uh, to set the hook. What, I'll, what I like to do personally is I'll go to the tackle shop, I'll take the rod, I'll bend it on the floor a little bit, the tip itself. Feel the action yourself, so you know what you're getting yourself into. Don't just go buy one off the internet because you can't feel it in your hands. But uh, you gotta go to a good, reputable tackle store and tell them what you want, and have them show you, and then like and then you, you test them, it, and then you test it out and feel it. Because you gotta be able to hold. If we're fishing the race, I mean, sometimes we gotta use up to 16 ounces of lead there. Are circle so, hooks mandatory now? In, I, in believe, I believe. They I are. believe they're if they're, if not, they're not. They're, they're gonna, going. If you're to. using bait, I believe. Yeah, so yeah. circle hooks, it sounds like, will be mandatory. We use them already uh, for the night bass fishing. It's, uh, but it sounds like it's going to be a mandatory thing. Uh, I don't know for certain. It could be already, uh, but the laws and stuff change month to month, I feel like. Uh, that being said, so now, after the race, you get to, to Montauk. Much more easy, easy fit, easier bottom, so to say, when we're drifting-wise. Uh, the bank itself isn't so sharp, it isn't so fierce, it's more of a gradual incline to 10 feet, you know, depending on, there's a lot of boulders. That, that, that bottom at Montauk, if, if you look at it, it's, it's relatively, it's, all it is is this, and then it's going down again. And the drifts are much slower. And that's it. And that's where we're using, we're using eels. And we can, we see the fish, we know where the fish are, okay, and we try to get up ahead of them and make that drift. Now, you have to understand, in your boat, and even in our boat, the the wind and the tide make all the difference in the world. For instance, when you're, how can I explain that? Uh, if you're, if you're drifting, let's just draw a boat. Okay, that's the boat. You got all the people here on the side of the boat. If the wind is blowing this way, and the tide is going this way, you're going to be drifting like this which is bad. Why is it bad? The boat's going this way. All your lines are in the same piece of bottom. They're all in this little little piece of bottom right there. It's not the, it's not the best scenario. Do you understand what I mean? What you want is you want the boat to be drifting like this with the lines going out here so that you're covering 70 feet of, of bottom. You want to drift that way. But that depends on the wind. That's why we can have the good wind at Montauk, and then all of a sudden you go there one night, and, and we had we had my buddy Jerry from Outdoor Life. We I had know. an easterly wind. We Tough. couldn't fish. Tough. We made a couple of drifts. We caught one fish that night. Yeah. We only made two, three drifts, and I said, you know what? Forget it. Can't do it. The night because, before was dynamite. We because because, night before. because we're drifting like this. Do you understand? So it's it the the wind. What direction the wind is has a big bearing on where you're going to drift and that no matter where i don't care if you're at race rock or in in in, in the middle of the race or block island or montauk it all has a bearing on it i'll tell you one other one other tip okay when when you get that boat again how can i when you've got the boat we're not artists here yeah we're not we're not we're not good at it but that's the boat you got you want to try you don't want them lines to go over and hit right here you want to try to get the the bait especially the eels you want to get them away from the boat you want to get them out away from the boat so it's nice to have that wind like blowing this way okay and the drift going this way okay somebody's calling on a phone and and the lines are not, the lines are not going straight down. They're going out at an angle. Like you want this. them to get away from the boat. You're getting the, the the eels away from the boat because believe it or not, the boat scares the fish. When we're fishing at Montauk, it's such shallow water. We shut the boat down most of the time. We shut the lights off. That's why we tell you guys, you got to be on your toes. Keep the rod nice and still. 
And with circle hooks, the last thing you want to do is set the hook. I know everybody's taught and raised their whole life from a child. When you get a bite, set the hook. Bury that hook in the fish's mouth. If you set the hook with this circle hook, you're going to lose the fish. Can we see that right here? Can you see the circle hook? That's a circle hook. The circle hooks are designed to hook the fish in the corner of the mouth 95% of the time. Now, sometimes it happens and they get, they get gut hooked or something, but 90% of the time, 95% of the time, this is in the corner of the fish's mouth. Uh, and if you set the hook with a circle hook, you will lose the fish. When you feel a fish, all you gotta do, and we go through this every single night, and I don't know how else to describe it or explain it to customers. All you gotta I do is- it, I think you need the, the cattle, uh, cattle prod, cattle prod <laughs> you know? You, you tell them two, three, four times, hit them in, a, hit them in the ankle. Because, we wait, told you not to set the damn hook. There's some guys that'll catch six, seven, eight of these big fish, and the guy right next to them, He'll have bites, we, but he's not going to catch them. We take 20 people out, and I would have to say this is probably consistent. This is true. That out of 20 people, unless we got the hot shots mm -hmm. from us, out of 20 people, they, there will always be one, two, three people that don't catch them. Now, you're entitled to one fisherman. One fisherman. You'll get some guys that'll catch six, eight, ten of those big fish. We're letting them go. Okay? He's only keeping one if he wants it. And the salt limit now, which is and, another thing. You know? So the and, big fish have to go back regardless now. But, but but he's catching that many fish, and there'll be guys on board the boat that are saying, what the hell is he yeah, doing? Yeah. I mean, if you just listen to us. Give us a couple of minutes. Just we let have. us explain it to you, and we'll, we, we want everybody to be happy, and we want everybody to catch them. But, man, let some, me take sometimes, the you. sometimes you can bring that mule to water, but you can't make him drink. You know, and that's just how it is. You know? Keep that in mind, though. At, because circle hooks are going to be mandatory now, you have to get in the mindset of not setting the hook. Let hey, the CJ, fish eat it. How long is the weeder on that to the main line? Do you this is about seven to eight feet, All right. roughly. Uh, that's how we that, tie them. That makes a big difference, you want too. want a little longer. I mean, some guys come show up on the boat and they got three, four feet. That's not going to catch you want well. You want to keep it away from this gear. And we're not using a three-way. We just have a regular barrel swivel. Little bit of mono, there's the sinker. Okay, keep it simple, stupid. I'll tell you one other little principle. trick. Guys get so excited, they might have a beer or two, or they have a sandwich, they start moving the rod. They start moving the rod around, and I'll use it for example. Greg, he always says, Don't be asking, hey, Fred, make me a sandwich. What do you say? You say it better than I do. Fred, don't. Yeah, he's holding the sandwich there. Yeah, no, put any mustard on that sandwich. Hey. Yeah, no, no, I didn't want mustard. And he's, he's moving the rod around. Well, those fish, they pick up on that. You have to keep that rod as still as possible. It increases your chances of catching a fish, hands down, 50% uh, and up. As long as you keep that rod steady, pay attention where your rig is on the bottom. And like we were stressing earlier, as soon as you drop it, unless the captain, unless Greg or Matt says to, to let it back down, you don't want to ever be letting that line back down in the middle of the drift. Otherwise, you're going to hang it up and lose it. And it's no question about it. And when, we, and when the guy tells you on this boat or any boat, wind them up, Wind them up. So many people, they, they stay there to the, we're already by where they live. I tell the customers all the time, wind them up so we can get back up and make another drift where they're living. They're up there, they're not down here. But you'll see three or four of the guys there, they drop it back they down again. They're 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 they ain't nothing there, man, you know what I mean? <laughs> we, we get a lot of guys that'll hang bottom, the inexperienced guys, and you'll see the line screaming out of the reel. You walk over to them, buddy, you got bottom. Oh no, oh no, this is a big fish. I line, know, look at the line going out. Line's it's a taken fish. off, line's taken off. If you, and if you don't say anything to him, if, oh. you let the, if you let the boat go, he'll be there for 10 minutes until he's out of line going. They'll lose the whole spoon today. Man, that was the biggest fish I ever hooked in my life. CJ, now, what's your thoughts on fluorocarbon pound test for this fishing? Uh, on this boat, at times of the year, uh, when the water's very, very clean, uh, when there's a full moon. That's a, that's a, good, that's a good question. We use uh, 40 pound test fluorocarbon. And at times of the year, fish are meter shy. And most of the time we're using uh, 80 pound test. Especially, especially when we're using the eels. Mm -hmm. Eels not, especially, yeah, we not, don't use. Not so much with the bucktails. No, the bucktails, in fact, we'll tell, you, we'll tell you a little tip that you should use a heavy mono with the bucktails and let me just show you why this is the line 40 pound test fluorocarbon that's what we use for um, the you got the you got the uh you got the swivel you got this going to the sinker again we're not we're not 
And then you got this. We're not uh, artists. Tracy wanted you to draw a fish, but if you want to draw a fish on there too, you could do that. Yeah. Hi, Tracy. Tell, tell Tracy next time we'll let him draw the fish. Tracy <laughs> says, set the hook, don't set the hook. Damn, Tracy, set the hook, don't set the hook. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things of using a heavier model in the race with bucktails is that the current, let's say the current's going this way. Now just, just imagine, okay? If you use that, this is the bucktail with all the feathers on it, okay? What happens is the current actually hits the monofilament and it actually picks the bucktail up and it presents the bucktail in a better position than if you were using a lighter monofilament. The diameter, the heavy diameter, the current hits that line and, and actually raises that bucktail up a little bit. That's why you see this. This is a this, this is heavy mono. This is a night this is a night rig right here. Okay and how, how many 125. Is this? this is a 125 pound test. But you can you just hold that yeah. up a minute. The the current will hit this monofilament and actually pick the bucktail up and it just presents the lure better to the fish. There's two things in fishing. I don't care where you fish in the world. There's there's two things. Presentation of whatever it is, the lure, the eel, the, the bait, the whatever, I don't care if you're casting a, a plug with a spit, presentation is the first thing, and then duplication. Anybody can catch a 60 pound bass, a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while, but there's guys that are out there that consistently catch big fish, and that's where the duplication comes in. They're making the right drift with the right tackle, at the right stage of the tide, and they know what the hell they're doing. Presentation, duplication. Two big things in fishing. Hey, say hi to uh, Mikey Kaluska. He's watching this from Colorado. He says you guys are known across Mikey the country. Mikey Kaluska, boy, I haven't Conway, seen you in a while. How are you, Mike? He's watching it in Colorado. Can you watching people it, all he around? lives in Colorado now. Yeah, he used to fish with me all the time, boy. His dad still fishes with me up here. People from watching Eastern. it from yeah. everywhere, you know, it's yeah. great. Good to, good to hear from you, Mikey. Uh, what else can we tell them here? Uh, when we're fishing Montauk, guys, you want to use a little lighter of a lead, too. What size First, bucktail? We, got, we, got a this is, we use anywhere from an ounce to an ounce and a quarter. Let's show them some of the bucktails. Yeah. One of the, we got some fancy stuff. I got a couple over one here. Of the, one of the more popular bucktails, and I I, I mean, Kenny, Kenny Broder, who makes these, used to work for me. He worked for me for a good number of years. It's called the Striper Snack. And it comes in numerous colors, and it's, Look, it's what flavor we got? <laughs> holy guacamole. That's holy guacamole. That's holy guacamole. Yeah, it is holy guacamole. But these are these are really really good bucktails. They, I mean, they uh, work they work really well. Uh, most of your charter boats, uh, you know, we use them all the this time. This is another one. I know this is one for at night, blackhead. Dark dark colors at night. If you had to choose one color, what would you take? Oh, you're putting me on the spot here. I like devil eggs. I like purples. Yeah, I think that is Devil Eggs purple. No, it's not. I like Devil Eggs. That's my favorite. That's a striker snack color. Um, <laughs> there's some, there's some interesting names. Here. Interesting it's names. Devil, Devil Eggs, I think. But be. dark, dark colors work best at night. Uh, brighter colors work good during the daytime. But uh, striker snacks work very, very good. And he makes all different kinds. And you can get them all over the place, you know. But we we have them on the boat all the time. Uh, what when, when we're fishing at Montauk, like I was saying about the sinker weight, uh, we use light lead. The lighter the better. I mean, at times we're using 6, 8 ounces, uh, opposed to fishing the race we're using 12, 14, 16. See, I'll tell you what else works very good. It's, I mean, this is called deviled eggs. That's my, that's my go-to. But the, uh, that color, that color there is just dynamite, you know. See, I told you, deviled eggs. Yep. How much weight do we want? Uh, Paul, want to know how much weight we use typically? I mean, it really depends. But Well, it depends on what we're fishing for, Paul. Uh, there's a lot of, we fish a lot of current here up in Connecticut and Montauk, New York waters, Block Island. We're constantly changing them. Yeah. Their, mates are, their mates are working on deck all the time. When the, when the tide's cooking like hell, sometimes in the race you're using 14, 16, 16 yeah. sometimes 20. As the tide falls off, you're going to you see adjust. the mates. You're going to see the mates adjusting and taking it all off, and by the time it's it's getting to be slack, they might be using five ounces. A general sinker overall for the bottom fishing, we we use right around a 12 ounce. Uh, that's a very popular sinker as far as standard bottom fishing, Block Island, uh, inside of Montauk, uh, shallower water. But we fish a lot of current up here, opposed to people that are down in like Jersey, so to say, where you can get away with a four or six ounce sinker. We see that all the time. Uh, we get guys up here. You're using 10, 12 ounces of lead. Well, we have a lot of current up here. 
So primarily a 10, 12 ounce sinker is your basic standard sinker for these waters. Uh, Rhode Island waters as well, Montauk, Block Island. Uh, but at times, like Greg said, we have to go up to uh, Got, uh, 60 ounces. Two questions. One guy wants to know if it can involve sinker versus a bank sinker. And uh, Joe wants to know if you can go back about when you set the hook with it when you're drifting with Neil, like when you set the hook. Yeah, you know, this, there's a lot of different sinkers out there. Um, personally, I don't know the difference between what we just, works better or not. We just, we use bank sinkers bank because bags. we buy them. I mean, I buy them by the ton. Uh, so, I mean, it's when I order them, I mean, I'm ordering a, <laughs> ordering a tremendous amount of them. And we have them on board the boat, all different sizes, but they're all bank sinkers. The sinkers, you know? sinker is a sinker. I mean, it's a piece of lead. You're gonna, you're gonna hang it up regardless if you get it stuck in a rock. I mean, some people the say most, the most important thing is is to get the right size at the right stage of the tide. That's the thing. Some people say some sinkers work better. A cannonball sinker might not get hung up as much, but some guys paint them. How many people yeah, paint, them the paint them during the port? You see that? They paint them different colors. Uh, and who had the question about the? Uh, Anyways, we had a question about I forget, I forget his name uh, with the circle hooks. Like I was saying, they're designed to do the job themselves. It's it's foolproof almost. The circle hook is not your standard J hook. It's bent in. I don't, can you see? I hope, they, I hope they can see it. But all you got to do is put steady pressure on the rod and just start reeling. I like to tell guys, point your rod down and just start turning the handle. The pressure from you reeling sets this hook in the mouth. And it's usually it's usually in a hinge right in the corner 95 percent of the time uh like i was saying if you set the hook and we see it all the time people get really excited and they said even some of the pros that we see on the boat they get really I mean, excited been, the you've, red hot you've been catching the hell out of them you've been taught your whole life to get the yeah. bite to set the hook yeah. well this is the we're, other we're end teaching of the, the backwards way yeah you you don't want to set the hook with a circle hook you will lose the fish um i don't know whoever designed this but they're a genius uh, Jerry wants to know if we supply the rods and rigs on the striper trips. We supply, we have a rod that is a rental rod, it comes with monofilament, which is uh, sometimes good for these big fish. Let them pull some line, monofilament stretches a little bit. Um, but we, we are, like, I, like I tell a lot of these guys, you know, we, we tie the rig on, we get you the rig. If you lose it, it's a few dollars. Uh, and we just ask you to replace it at the end of the night. I don't want to chase anybody down for a couple dollars. Quite frankly, if you can't afford a couple dollars, for a bank sinker, you might not want to be fishing for these striped bass. Uh, but you're gonna you're gonna lose some gears, even especially even the pros, fishing in the race. Even the pros. I mean, you, I, you I don't can know how drop many that. I lose. You can drop that sinker down, and it goes into a crevice, and it's gone forever. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it just it, we don't like it, but it but that's it how it happens. happens. Yeah. That 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 bottom in the race and race rock and plum gut, that bottom is is hard. It's rough. It's every. Every inch, it's like this, trying to grab that sinker. That's why you got to feather that bottom. You got to be aware of what's going on. I Are you going to lose a few sinkers? Definitely. You know. I would have to say our our rental rods that we pass out are top of the line as far as a rental rod, so to say, goes to me. I mean, we keep up on it. We have Ryan doing the maintenance on the reel, the grease, whole nine yards. We replace the guides, rods, whatever it needs to be. Uh, but I'd say we have top we, of the line we stuff. We do things. For we do things a lot different than most. Head boats. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have been in this business a long time, and I've been on head boats up and down the East Coast from Key West to Maine. And uh, some some of these boats are are fishing with stuff that's just. Of course, it's you know you take the guys like down south at uh, Cape May and in New Jersey. A lot of them are tourists. They get them on a boat once a year. They go out. They catch one or two little tiny little fish, even if they're no good to eat, and that's it. Well, they don't have good tackle. I mean, the people that come with us. We got a lot of people that go 20, 30, 40, 50 times a year with us. Uh, they're good fishermen. They got good tackle and, and they want to catch. And that being said, even the guys that come once a, once a time, once a year, that's the tackle we have, the rental rods. The, it's top the, best, of the, line the best things that can happen to us is go out on the other boats and then come see us. Because when you come out with us and you, and you see how clean the boat is and what we've got for tackle and what we've got for electronics and how we treat everybody, there's a hell of a difference. We, we I like mean, that's to, why we're voted the most popular vote year, uh, vote year after year. We like year to think we try and take care of as many people as possible. And we got CJ. CJ, do you have a most favorite memorable bass trip on the Blackhawk? Oh, anything man, anything that pops night, out to you? We had one night where it was absolutely chaos at Montauk. Uh, we must have caught, and this was when you could keep the big fish. Um, this was before they put the moratorium on them, uh, the slot limit. This was a few years back. It was uh, on a full moon in 
August, I want to say. Sorry, it's, I think it was August. Is that the night you had, what, 70? We had 70, 80 of these 40, 50 pound fish. I think we must have had 40 or 50 of those fish between 45 and 48 pounds. It got to the point where- We really, don't get me wrong. We oh really, yeah, we can only keep our boat limit. Yeah, we're, we're releasing them, you know, but- uh, But it was, it was neat seeing some people God, they couldn't, they couldn't get enough of it, catching six or eight of these things. But like Greg said, there's always one that struggles to catch one. Uh, but that was a pretty fun night for me. Full I, had long, a, so I had a trip at Race Rock. I don't think you were working. Uh, I, I know Matt was. I was not. No. We, were, we were at Race Rock, and uh, when they decided to bite, boy, I'll tell you, it was something. Again, this was before the any kind of moratorium or any kind of limits or anything. And we had we were popping off. It got so frustrating. These were all big fish. These were all 40 to 60 pound fish. And we we probably ended up actually keeping maybe six or eight, but we must have popped off 30. Wow. And we had to leave the fish. Yes, we left them. We were Matt was so frustrated. That's when Matt was working on the deck and I was running the boat. <laughs> From these people setting the hook and popping them off that we left these fish to go out in the middle we went to the shoal in the middle for smaller striped bass that the party could handle it's one of the few times i left such a bonanza to go catch smaller fish but you you do what you you do what you do mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. there's places where we fish another couple of tips you know you got to be kind of quiet especially in the shallow water uh, sometimes Sometimes we'll make a drift on a rock pile and we'll we'll catch two fish and I'll leave or Matt will leave, whoever's running the boat, will leave to go to another spot close by. And you hear the customer saying, Well, why why is he leaving? We just caught two. What you know? Well, we we leave because we scare what's there. You made the drift, it's shallow water, we shut all the lights off, we shut the engines off, we shut the generators off, we make the drift, bang, bang, we catch two. If I made another drift, we wouldn't catch anything. So we go to a different spot and we let this thing sit for a half an hour. We'll come back another make it and make another drift out of it. Bang, bang, we get three. But the boat, the big boat actually scares them. Okay, so you gotta take that into consideration. Another thing, another thing which which the small boats violate, if you're if you're fishing. If you're fishing on a spot, when you drift over it, you start to drift here, okay? We're, we're drifting over it this way. When you get down here, instead of running up over the fish, run, the, tide's go, the tide's going this way, right? Okay? Instead of running up over the fish, go around them. Get up here, start it again, drift over it again. When you go through them again, go around them one way or another. So many guys, especially small boats in that shallow water, they rip over them, man. And you wonder why they stop biting. I mean, sometimes, sometimes when the weather's a little rough and there's a big body of fish there and they're hungry, it don't make no difference. You could, you could almost throw hand grenades over there, they're still gonna chew. But there's other times when there's not a lot of fish there and they're and they're a little particular. You got to be a little bit, you know, finesseful about it. We we try not to run over what we're fishing over, no matter what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know. Any questions, Randy? Um, I think that we got them. You all. wanted to mention some. This is off topic a little bit, but somebody called you about noodling. I got a question. Thoughts on diamond jigs at night? Diamond jigs at night. Don't waste your time. Um, yeah, sometimes the yeah. Fish, if you get the some, lights on, okay, for some you get the reason, with on the, sometimes. And I've had them where they bluefish, but normally I've had them where they clobbered it, but it doesn't happen that often. Yeah, normally we, reason, we don't yeah. use the diamond jigs at night. There has been some nights where they bite into the dark uh, on the diamond jigs, but a lot of times we turn the big bright, dirt brights on and try and keep them with us. That's when the diamond jigs do work at night. Sometimes, not all the time, um, but I I wouldn't recommend. We see a lot of guys that bring them out when we're night bassing especially because quite frankly they were struggling to catch them on the eels and they want to try something different and then they really struggle because they, <laughs> <laughs> we get people that bring shrimp yeah <laughs> they'll bring this they'll bring that they'll bring new well i caught one once my my neighbor said he caught a big bass on this thing here well, what is it well it's a it's a it's a piece of apple pie <laughs> well, we see what we see it all i mean i've caught tuna fish on sliced tomatoes i mean believe me when there's a lot of tuna fish around and you're feeding them i mean i've actually caught tuna fish on but I wouldn't recommend it. 
Okay. We do see it all. We, we, we see it all. We see it all. What were you going to say about uh, Somebody called you about noodling. I don't, I don't know if a lot of customers know about noodling. That's <laughs> going in the hole and getting I went, catfish. I, went, uh, is, I got a funny story. That's why I'm bringing it up. Why? Uh, I went, today, I, went, I got a funny story. Of, I, I got a funny story about today. I was cool. down in Oklahoma. And uh, I, I had an opportunity to do that. I, I didn't do it. I'm not climbing <laughs> in that dirty water and shoving my hand in a freaking hole for a catfish that, that could eat me. I mean, I. I or the see, snake or the snapping yeah, turtle. I mean, it's just, or the other I things mean, some of these there. guys bury their. I watched, you know, with, we were the six or eight guys in two boats. And of course, they, they're all they're all kind of rebels, you know, down in Oklahoma. They're all drinking Bud Light. And, oh, yeah, get in the water. You can't see the you can't see the bottom of the of the water in six inches of water. It's so dirty, and they're climbing in the mud, and they want me to get in there. I, I didn't do it. I I didn't have enough alcohol or something. They go in there and shove their hand in that damn thing. I tell you, the hell with that, man. I gotta say, uh, today one of our dear friends, it looked like he went doodling. Like Jake, we were on the Jake. 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 Is he He's listening probably now? listening, yeah. Jake, I'm sure he, he is. He hasn't said anything, we, uh, but I'm sure he is. We were on the ice today, ice fishing, and he went. These guys have been doing a lot of ice fishing. He went and checked the tip up, and uh, he gets it up to the hole. And of course, he ran to the, to the tip up. He, he likes to do that from time to time. He's a special friend. Uh, but, anyways, I guess he drops the fish right at the hole, and he stuck his whole arm through the foot of snow on the ice into the hole, and out he comes so right wet. Right the So wet with a big small mouth bass and he was so excited and that just made me think of the noodling and that just happened today i won't get into the details about how he fell through the ice getting off up to his waist that was he great did, really he did yeah was it alcohol induced no no he just uh, up to his waist yeah like i said he's our special friend he just you know <laughs> <laughs> jake if you're watching we love you uh, but it was a it was quite funny you're all right jake i'll tell you no matter what you must have quick hands boy to catch a small mouth in the hole i pulled up the truck and he's soaking wet <laughs> it's pretty good uh, but anyways anyhow that uh anything else we could say to help these people out any more questions coming in we got a random question about toilets and what not to put down them i don't know why but well uh, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of self-explanatory isn't it yeah i mean i wouldn't go throw my trash down it but Especially a head on a boat. <laughs> yeah, we, we try and limit that stuff, guys. If what goes in the toilet belongs in the toilet, there's trash cans for a reason. What the hell kind of question is that? I don't know. I just. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that but, uh, doesn't pertain to me. Anyhow, on that note. That's from Paul Wurchaya or something. We're going to be uh, we're going to be putting a couple of ads in. We're we're going to be looking for a couple of people, a couple serious people that would like to work maybe part time on a Black Hawk. I know we take a lot of kids out. Yeah. Stuff, you know, but. Yeah. Uh, if anyone's interested, you can give us an email or, or whatever. But uh, uh, you got to have some experience. You got to be kind of local, and uh, we're uh, yeah, we could we could. You got to be gonna, fishy. We're, we're gonna be, be fishy. yeah. You got to be fishy. We're gonna be doing uh, we're gonna be doing more trips. We're gonna start squid fishing here pretty soon. You know, no, it's it's coming up. It's, it's coming only a couple up. months away. We're getting ready to go. Once yeah, we get th there was an earlier question I think about squid fishing. We're gonna start in April, we think. Or well, we're not sure on yet. The, depends depends on, on the weather and stuff. And, how warm the water is and what's going on the draggers once the draggers start catching them and we know they're off the beach down there we're going to go will that be the end of april first of may sometime in that time period but we're going to be doing may for sure we'll be doing it we're going to be doing a lot of squid trips no question about it we got the lights we got more lights than anybody and, and uh that's a lot of fun if you haven't done it a lot of fun great to eat good times yep any other okay. things before we before we sign off for the night? Do you have any questions, camera boy? No, uh, you can say hi to your sister Lisa because she's watching. Lisa or Lindsay? Uh, it says Lisa. That's my mother. I, oh, your mom. Sorry. Hi, hi mom. I knew what she's already doing. Hi, Mrs. Adams. It's got an Adams in there. I hope she got the TV <laughs> fixed today. She called. I me. hope the TV was she fixed today. Called me with a TV problem. Right? <laughs> really? I had to help her with the phone. What a jack of all trades, huh? I'll tell you. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned next week. Stay tuned. Uh, okay, we'll keep the, the keep the questions coming in. We're getting we're getting a lot more emails and a lot more questions. We're trying to answer everything, and we will get to all these topics that you want to talk to once a week. Next week. At the fishery, we'll show you how to fillet the right way and how to handle fish and take care of it. So we'll see you next week, folks, okay? Take care, guys. Take care.